Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit and welcome to this video. In the last few months I have played through Classic with every single class, except the Amazon, so I decided to change that. We start off with the usual cry about our stash size and head into the cold plains. I figured a Boazon would be fun for this run, so I quickly start making my way through and start shooting. Okay, this is already taking forever and I'm not even out of the cold plains. A couple of minutes just to take down some random monsters in the cold plains. Surely it can't get any worse than this. Let's go and farm some Rakanishu, get some levels, see how it goes. And yeah, this is kind of disappointing. Yup, still disappointing. Oh dear lord, this is just sad. Okay, no worries, no worries. We have magic arrow, maybe that can fix it. Nope, still just really sad. I know how to meddle this. Hello and welcome, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing a Javazon through Classic. We make our way to the underground passage and start throwing poison javelins. The way to use these the best is by throwing them ahead and then letting the monsters run into them. Ah, look at that, things are dying! The sweet bliss of other things death. In the barracks, things go less smooth and I get myself stuck in a corner, where I make a valiant escape. Well, anyway... Hi, welcome to the video. This is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing an Amazon through Classic. We head out through the Blood Moor and into the Stony Field where I use the power of a spear to stab Rakanishu in this phase. Things get tight though because I'm barely paying any attention at this point and I didn't notice I was all the way down to 1 HP. Luckily I do end up surviving and taking care of the goblins. I mean we can't have me dying in Act 1 now can we? That would never happen and has never happened before of course. I decide to go for a lightning based build and spec into power strike to get some added electric damage to my attacks, which I follow up by making my way into the tower to go and farm some experience and my stealth. That is, until I remember that the countess doesn't drop any runes. Because runes do not exist in classic, no matter, the tower is still the best place to level in the early game, so no regrets here. I go ahead and wave at the smith as I grab the hammer. He isn't very happy about this though and starts charging me. I very easily take him down because power strike isn't as broken as the skill I'm going to be using for most of the game but it's still pretty damn good. Grief burn the quick drops me an artex belt which is always a nice way to get things started on the gear side. It has 40 gold resist but only 8 slots for potions. That is until we upgrade it. The recipe for that requires a gem and 2 runes that don't exist in classic. God damn it. In the first of many boss fights I'm going to do this to, I walk up to Andario and have a very high voltage fight with her. Seriously, if you have never seen a lightning Amazon takedown bosses, you are in for a treat on this video, cause it's gonna be electrifying. In the rocky ways I am once again very busy not paying attention, so I walk around without potions or HP, nearly ending my third Amazon attempt as well, I mean my first attempt, first attempt, just my first attempt here. Having reached level 18, I get to use Charge Strike. Charge Strike is a skill where you strike something in the face and as a reward get balls of lightning charged out of it as well. Yeah, the skill names in Diablo are pretty on the nose. So in the Halls of the Dead, I can get rid of whatever is going on in here pretty easily. Cause Jesus, that's a lot of monsters for a single room. I pick up the cube and use it to roll myself a weapon. Nothing special, but it will get the job done for now. A quick visit to Elzix for some gambling nets me nice gloves with some magic find and I'm immediately rewarded for it in the far oasis with a unique ring. Which turns out to be a 5226 Nago ring. The maggot lair isn't much of a problem, all normal and I go ahead and grab myself the staff and the viper's amulet. One thing I haven't talked about is how charge strike splits up into multiple bolts hitting multiple enemies and getting a spread going that way. However, egg bosses are thick and will get hit by every single bolt. And if you're wondering how good that is, yes, it's as good as you think it is, yes. So Duriel melts in the wake of my bolts and goes down after just a few stabbings. The Jade figurine gets added to my toy collection in Act 3, Sasak hits me really fucking hard and for some reason my balls just aren't hitting these zombies. Once they hit however, they drop me amazing 29 light rest, 20 run walk, 19 mf boots that will easily carry me up to the end game. I activate the fire for the gibbon and go for a quick round of inventory tetris which almost ends up costing me my life. 
The ring, however, is useless and I make my way towards Travancore, where I find Hosaurus boots from a box, usually something that will make me very happy. However, I already have the sweet lightning resist boots, so it's definitely a case of why now, why not on another run. I have an intense fight with the council, in which I casually obliterate all of them. Man, this is so much better than the stupid physical spears on that yes, I know, I still need to do as well. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten, it still haunts me every day. The ring that dropped during Travancore is perfect for Mephisto because it has 29 lightning resist. And now I get into the best part of the Durance of Hatred, the part without dolls and with lots of farming, also known as level 3. <clears throat> I said without dolls. Oh god damn it, every single one of my Mephisto runs is going to have dolls, isn't it? I hate this game. Anyway, Mephisto goes down easily and I make my way towards Act 4 first. It starts off with the outer steps, only to be greeted by the first of many, many, oh so many lightning immunes. Don't worry though, I do have a plan for those, but we'll get into that later. Killing Israel gets me two skill points and I head towards the Hellforge, where I get rid of Hephaesto. Grab the hammer and it doesn't even matter that I don't get any runes, cause I am here to get me some topaz. Because before heading into the Chaos Sanctuary, it is time for the biggest farm of the entire run. In Classic, the best source for good items is Mephisto Normal, which really changes the momentum of the game quite a bit, cause you get your endgame gear at the end of Act 3 Normal instead of never fucking ever in the expansion. Classic doesn't have elite item bases, exceptional uniques like a Viper Magi or a Gaze don't exist. So the best gear you can get always falls into one of two categories, one, a bunch of cobbled together stuff that pretends to be good, or two, science. I'm not kidding, Silence is endgame GG stuff in Classic. I mean, you can clear the game with it in the expansion as well, I mean, I've done that. But I seriously don't think there is anything better than Silence for a lot of characters in Classic. Also, I fucking hate dolls. The drop start off with a unique full helm, which is a Dusk Deep. Next up, a Hawkmail, which gets me cannot be frozen, faster run walk, and some cold resist. A boss pack of dolls drops me a second shield plus one to my skills and a nice chance to block, don't mind if I do. However, I don't have the strength, so I quickly go and clear the den for my respec and go ahead and use it. Block in classic doesn't work with dexterity by the way, the percentage on the shield is just the percentage you get, so I get almost max block for free here, which is kind of insane. I go ahead and put 75 in strength for the shield and 65 into dex for the throwing spear. Oh well, I did 60, but we'll get there. The rest goes into Vitality. Skill wise, I spec into Charge Strike, because it's one of the best skills in the game and melts everything it comes across until it really, really, really doesn't. But that is a problem for future me, and like I said, I do have a plan. The rest of my points go into prerequisites and synergies. I buy a superior pylon from Halbu, because this is the exact moment I learned that throwing weapons can't have mods in classic. Yay, I'm sure not having any access to good physical damage or anything like that won't be a problem anytime soon, who needs it after all? A all of a time later, Mephisto drops me an amulet, which turns out to be angelic, could be useful if I find the ring as well. And some chance gods, but they are only 27%, so not really worth it, especially compared to the rare chain gloves he drops me next. These have 22 lightning resist and 21 mf, these I will gladly use. A rare amulet with 99 resists on it drops as well, you don't need as much resistance in classic. So instead of minus 40 in nightmare and minus 100 in hell, you only get minus 20 and minus 50 respectively. Which means that this amulet knocking 100 off goes a big way towards closing the tab on your needed resistances. With all of this fancy new gear I go ahead and continue my journey through the river of flame towards the chaos sanctuary. In the expansion, a Javazon clears out normal and nightmare for basically free. And it's the same in classic, well that is, unless you are an idiot like me and get stuck. Besides that one little tidbit, I have no trouble in the sanctuary. I even grab a nice ring along the way and get ready for the Diablo fight. Which lasts about as long as I usually do. I'm already very high level, so I go ahead and wave hello to Corpse Fire. Try and imbue the throwing weapon, but alas, it doesn't work. After the Andario fight, I make myself a diamond studded shield, because if everything dies in a few hits anyway, I might as well get more resist. I mean, there's just no point in overkilling something with a thousand damage or ten damage, it's still dead, so might as well be safe. I go ahead and make short work of Rodamond and Duriel. 
grab the git bin, get a ring, and you can sell your weapon to NPCs to refill it as long as they have enough space in their inventory to buy it back. It's nicer than running back to the repair guy, especially in Act 3 where he's on the moon. So I checked if there's enough space, and it's gone. It isn't as big of a deal when your weapon doesn't have any mods, cause you can just gamble a new one in every act, but man that is silly, I even checked for the space. The console goes down easily, as does Mephisto. The planes of despair make me do some soul searching, but with my resistances maxed, I'm not too scared of them and decide to go in anyway. Viper Eater the unholy over here is like many things that will be here from now on, lightning immune, so I need to stab him, which usually is rough but doable, you just use your jabs and you have like some elemental damage on them, a bit of physical damage and they die. However, my javelins don't have any mods, which means I don't have those things, which means I can't kill him. So my efforts of killing him are about as effective as my college degree is, and since I studied history, nothing happens here at all. Just kidding, I didn't finish college. I just walked away from it, like I do here. Later on in the river of flame, I am a girl stuck in between a group of big burly men that want to pound me. However, I have seen that movie before, so I go ahead and save an exit and make my way through the chaos sanctuary. I'm playing the best boss killer in the game, so yes, the Diablo fight went well. However, before getting into hell, I do want to do some more farming, cause I feel a bit underleveled for it. I need a place with tons of things to kill, no resists, and a lots of experience. Oh yes, I know just the place. Hello, cow level, we meet again. Even on level 40, a javazon makes short work of players 8 nightmare cows, and even though I did throw out my javelins once or twice and had to refill them again at Keats, and despite using the wrong town portals and risking my life for no reason a couple of times, I very quickly reached level 50 and headed to hell. Where fun goes to die. Remember all the fun times where everything just died by pressing a single button? The laughs we had, the enjoyment we found, the fulfillment of killing it all. Yep, all gone, it's time to fucking suffer. Corpse Fire is the first to make our life much harder than it used to be. And at this point, I might as well call his fight a dumpster fire. Get it? Get it? I do pick off weaklings every once in a while, but most of Act 1 is filled with kiting, running, and lots of crying as I run around the piles of lightning immunes in my path. In the catacombs I close the door on a boss pack, which despite being useless because they can just open the door, makes me feel safe. And I hear Andario calling, and even though she's poison and I don't want to break my change, I do take her down. And I head into Act 2, I'm able to use the lightning immunes in the sewers to my advantage and use the spread of lightning fury to deal with Rodamont. Oh yeah, I hadn't explained lightning fury yet. It's a skill that shoots lightning everywhere when I throw javelins at a monster. And it is very furious. Yeah, the names are really, really that on point. I head into the maggot lair, where I get completely brick walled by a beetle. Surely my Valkyrie and Pratum together can clear that out, once they pass the corner. <sighs> With Pratum dying of sadness, I decide to go pick up the amulet first instead. This is also the moment I had been foreshadowing to earlier. Remember when I said I had a plan? Well, this is it. I can't deal lightning damage to the lightning immunes, and I don't have physical damage, so I'm going to respec into a poisoned lightning javazon. And I'm going to use plague javelin for ranged stuff and charge strike for poison immunes. I know, it's rocket science. The only downside to this is that charge strike now deals a lot less damage, cause its synergies don't have any points in them. But like my partner tells me when I ask her why she's with me, it's good enough. And with my new skills packed into, I get to kill lightning immunes. I mean look at that, isn't it beautiful? I go ahead and poison every single bug that's left in the maggot lair and collect my stuff. Talrush's tomb went mostly fine, except for the part where it became a huge mess and I got sandwiched between poison immune dried corpses and might aura skeletons. I even went back at it from the start, but I quickly realized that clearing the entire tomb again was going to be faster than suffering through this, cause that stupid sarcophagus is just not going down. So that is exactly what I did before making it to Duriel. 
And despite Charge Strike being much less powerful than the skill I used to know, I don't have any problems defeating Duriel and head into Act 3. Usually, Act 3 Hell as a Lightning Amazon is about as fun as getting your javelin shoved violently up your ass pointy side first. However, because I have Plague Javelin, it isn't too bad at all. I have to get away from one annoying pack of bugs at the start of the jungle, but manage my way through the rest of it just fine. Very slowly, but fine. I get a very close call in the spider cavern, where Sazark thought it would be a good idea to be cursed, extra strong and might enchanted, which is a lot of words to say he hits really fucking hard and will kill me in one blow if I don't watch out. Luckily I have a Valkyrie to tank for me instead. One kit bin later I get the hugest of huge upgrades to my gear, managing to upgrade from a 25% to a 26% fire resist ring. The Flayer dungeon goes mostly fine cause the Valkyrie is able to tank everything. So I make my way into the sewer. And I've mentioned this a bunch of times throughout my videos already over the last 2 years because I've been doing this channel for 2 years already, thank you all so much. But anyway, the sewers are my least favorite area in the game. It's tight, it's dark and it's a train wreck all around. But this might actually be the worst time I've ever spent in there. The horror skeletons aren't dying from the poison, cause they are very resistant to it and unravelers are reviving and healing them. However, that isn't the worst part. Remember my build? Poison for range and Pikachu for up close and personal. Enter the dolls. These are a perfect counter to my build, cause you don't want to kill them up close. They will explode in your face and that will result in lots of death. And because it isn't the expansion, the Valkyrie doesn't quite get enough damage to kill them either. Especially with them getting healed and revived. This means my only option is to just charge strike at them from up close and just hope for the best. Seriously, every single one of these little shitlings dying could be the end of the run. So I decide to hire a mercenary, surely that will help. I also didn't even realize I got one for free cause I completed something or another. Anyway, let's see how good he is, let's find out together. So, a grand total of 2 hits later, he is down for the permanent count, they are so bad in classic. So, it's time for the only solution I know at this point that doesn't involve me risking the run on literally every single enemy. Time to run around like a headless chicken hoping to get lucky, or as I call it, my 20s. It took a few tries, but I do end up finding the gloom bats that indicate level 2. Grab the heart and get the hell out of dodge, cause I was not having a good time in there. The council isn't too bad, I deal a lot of poison damage, and they have no poison resistance. It takes a while, but down they go. The Durans gets a bit messy, but I make it through unscathed and go ahead and explain how high voltage works to Mephisto before heading into the final act. I ordered some skill points that got delivered at the door and as I round up the planes of despair and the city of the damned, I can crack a smile. My plan has worked. I am through all the areas with the piles of lightning immunes. I love it when a plan comes together. So now I can go ahead and use my final respect to become a pure lightning based Javazon once again. So I go ahead and do just that. And all will be well with the world again. Oh, stat wise I did strength index for gear rest into vitality as usual. I also put a bunch of points into the Valkyrie cause I will be encountering some lightning immunes for sure, but she can deal with those. I quickly make my way through the river of flame. And to no one's surprise a Javazon has no problem clearing out the chaos sanctuary. So I start blasting my way through, only taking very long breaks when the lightning immunes show up. But then I blast again, and get bored to death again by lightning immunes. After having finally gotten rid of the Grand Vizier of Chaos by luring him out and jabbing him and hoping that I won't die to his fire explosion, it is time to pray that the other two keepers of the seals aren't lightning immune. First off, Lord the size. I get lucky here, he isn't lightning immune and I get to clear him. The infector also plays nice, so I get away with forgetting to check them first. 
and after all of that I head into the Diablo fight where I need to be careful cause he actually hits like a truck when you're this low level. But I end up clearing the run, completing the set, meaning I have now beaten Classic with every single class. And while my gear and build are displaying in the background, don't worry, I will play more Classic. I'm looking forward to trying other builds and challenge runs on it as well. But for now, if you like the content, please consider subscribing or even becoming a member. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.